today I'm going to talk about uterine fibroid. Uterine fibroid is a benign tumor of the uterine smooth muscle. It is oestrogen dependent and present in about 20% of women, especially in reproductive age. This picture shows the types of uterine fibroid. There is the intramural fibroid, submucosal fibroid, subserosa fibroid, pedunculated fibroid and also cervical fibroid which is not shown in this picture. The risk factors of fibroid is reproductive age which is around 30 to 50 years old, nulliparity, no children and obesity, family history of fibroids or from the African racial origin. The clinical features of fibroids are, um, are different based on their location. For the intramural fibroid, they might be menorrhagia, which means heavy bleeding, pelvic and back pain, and also pressure symptoms like constipation or urinary retention. For subserosa fibroid, there might be pain or pressure symptoms. Submucosal fibroid, there might be menorrhagia, recurrent miscarriages because the fibroid will distort the uterine cavity and also secondary dysmenorrhea, which means menstrual pain. And for cervical fibroid, there will be menorrhagia. And also other symptoms include the anemic symptoms like shortness of breath, palpitation, dizziness and fatigue, abdominal swelling, and subfertility. For physical examination, on general examination, we look for signs of anemia. For abdominal examination, there will be there might be a mass at the midline of the abdomen and the mass will be firm in consistency, smooth surface, non-tender, and the mobility would be only side to side. For bimanual examination, we do it to differentiate whether the mass is uterine or ovarian origin. And for specular speculum exam. We do it to rule out local lesions, for example, cervical polyp. For investigation, blood tests, we do full blood count to look for anemia. And also coagulation profile to exclude bleeding disorders that may cause heavy bleeding. Thyroid function test is done to exclude hypothyroid causing menorrhagia. And we also do bills to assess the kidney function as large fibroid may compress the ureter which lead to hydronephrosis and subsequent kidney damage. GSH, group safe and whole, is a pre-operative preparation for blood transfusion in case of massive blood loss during operation, and also UPT, urine pregnancy test, to exclude pregnancy. For imaging investigation, we can do transabdominal or transvaginal ultrasound to look for the origin of the tumour, the site, size, and the nature just to confirm these features of the tumour. And also, we can measure the endometrial thickness, distinguish between fibroid and ovarian mass, and also exclude hydronephrosis based on the ultrasound. Next, we can also do diagnostic hysteroscopy to allow the direct visualisation of the whole endometrium. We can see if there is any endometrium hyperplasia or any endometrial polyps. So next, management of uterine fibroids. If the patient is asymptomatic, we can do conservative management by repeating clinical examination and ultrasound after 6 to 12 months. If the patient is symptomatic, we do the management based on whether they still want to have children in the future. So if the fertility is still desired, we can either do medical treatment or conservative surgery. So under medical treatment, there are two groups which are hormonal and non-hormonal, as shown in this table here. And for conservative surgery, we can do myomectomy, hysteroscopic resection, or uterine artery embolization. And if the patient is already very old age, and does not desire any children in future, we can do definitive surgery, which is hysterectomy. That's all for this video. If you like my video, do hit like and press on the subscribe button.
if you would like to get uh, updates on my future videos. So see you in the next video.